On Remembrance Sunday, we remember all those whose sacrifices in war meant that we can live the lives that we have today. I am grateful for both of my grandfathers who saw active service in World War II. Jack Wallace was an army officer who found himself in the Balkans at the end of the war, and he correctly predicted that peace was not going to last forever in that part of the world. Michael Lloyd, my other grandfather, was an army officer and a map maker. He made the most beautiful maps, and he mainly served in North Africa. And since World War II, North Africa has not been without trouble. There's been bloodshed in Algeria, in Egypt, more recently in Libya. On Remembrance Sunday, we can give thanks that Europe hasn't been engulfed in a war that's covered the whole of Europe since 1945. France and Germany have been at peace for all that time. And if you take the equivalent time back, they'd been at war three times in just 75 years. But, of course, we've also seen two big wars right on our doorstep in Europe in my lifetime. Russia and Ukraine, of course, are currently fighting. And the war between the former nations of Yugoslavia was horrific. In that reading we've just heard, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Peace is a gift from God. Peace is a foundation stone for everything in our lives. Because if you live in war, then everything in your life is going to be defined by war. You'll be sleeping maybe in a bomb shelter. You may not know where your food or water is coming from. You may not be able to travel. You may be separated from your loved ones. So my granny married my grandpa in 1940 and their wedding night, that, that the picture, that famous picture of St Paul's Cathedral surrounded by smoke was taken the night they got married. They were separated from most by, for, for most of the war, of course. And my granny lived in London during the Blitz. So she would wake up in her shelter not knowing if the houses on her street would still be there. And when the postman came, she was afraid because he might be bringing an envelope that would tell her that her new husband had died. I don't know if you can imagine what that must have been like. But on Remembrance Sunday, we remember all those other people who made sacrifices as well as those who fought. And sadly, we know all too well that peace doesn't last in our world. The wars which are happening today come from people wanting more, more land, more power, more things. When Jesus promises peace to his friends, he says, I do not give to you as the world gives. Wars end when the two sides sit down and talk. That's the only way wars end. They always end like that. You may wonder why they can't just sit down a bit sooner. They figure out how to resolve their dispute. They make sure that both sides come away with something. But true peace, the peace that Jesus is talking about, is a gift from God. It's not the same as when the two sides sit down and figure it out. It is a change of heart which stops you wanting what other people have. Because you're content with what you've got, contentment is a gift from God. It is forgiveness for others which enables you to let go of the hurt and anger you feel about things that have been done to you. That is a gift from God. It doesn't come just from working harder. When you let those things go, you get rid of your own burden. It's not burdening the other person anymore. It is compassion to see what other people who are very different from you might be thinking and feeling. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. True peace 
means letting go of the things that trouble you and make you afraid. It means reaching out to other people. And this Remembrance Sunday, we pray not only in gratitude for the peace that we have, but for the two conflicts that are happening very close to us, which affect many people in our own country, in Ukraine and in Israel and Gaza. We pray for the people who are seeking peace. There are many, and we don't hear much about them, including the very many Christians involved, for the hope and compassion which are needed if they're going to begin to resolve those wars. God's peace is costly. It cost everything for Jesus, who get, died on the cross so that you and I could have peace with God. It is costly to forgive people who've done terrible things to you. So much easier to hold on to the things that have been done, but it hurts you in the end. Today, as we remember in silence and pray for those who are still in the middle of war, take the time to commit yourself to peace, peace with others, peace with God, in your heart and in your life. Let's pray. Lord God, this morning we pray for that peace which only comes from you, for the change of heart that will make us content with what we have, for forgiveness for others so that we can let go of the hurt and anger that we feel and for compassion, that we can see things from other people's point of view. We ask those things in the name of Jesus, our Prince of Peace. Amen.